Thank you to our bell choirs. The bells uh, have started rehearsing again, and um, if you are interested in joining them, to talk with Joanne about uh, about that. So welcome to worship this morning. I'm Lynn Bartlow. I'm the lead pastor here. Pastor Kevin is over at Sanctuary leading our worship service at, on that campus this morning, and Pastor Kim uh, is chomping at the bit to get back to, to church, but she's still recovering from her uh, car accident. I welcome you to worship this morning. Have a few announcements for you. Um, um, today's the last day for our congregational survey. Um, you received in your Friday blog post, um, and everybody got last Sunday an invitation to make your voice known as we are um, preparing for our vision summit. So if you still need that, um, a link to that, let me know. Just email me, lynn at umcstmarks.org, and I will send you that link. And tomorrow, it ends, so today's your last day to do that. Um, today's also the last day to sign up for Food with Friends. So if you have not signed up for the new version of, the, the current version of Dinners for Eight, Tables of Eight, Food with Friends, whatever you want to call it, um, then check out um, the messenger for some information about that and then sign up for that. Uh, there are other things in your bulletin. This week is Margaritas and uh, the Marksman and Church and Society and Finance Committee and something with the Cubs. I'm not sure. We've got a whole row over here of Cubs fans, so go Cubbies. Um, this week is also, we, we have Soul Station on Wednesday, and Al is making us Coney Dogs. Al has a recipe for Coney dogs that goes back to his hot dog stand in Kokomo, Indiana. Um, So if we have too many of you, we might have to have half a hot dog, but come join us Wednesday night for Soul Station. Dinner starts at 5.30. We're having Coney dogs and um, fixins to go with it. There will be gluten-free available for you. Um, And then our program starts about 6.15. You can join us online, but you won't get a Coney dog or uh, join us in person. So hope that you'll join us for a pick-me-up as we we meet Wednesday night in the seat back in front of you or in the seat where you sat if you're on the back row. There is a green piece of paper. We invite you to register your attendance if you didn't do so on the iPads on the way in. You can also use the QR code on the screen in front of you. I welcome those of you who are worshiping with us online. Um, You can use this QR code. You can go to our Sunday Tools page right there on the front page of our website and uh, join us Uh, sign in for worship, but you can also get the bulletin and announcements uh, there on that page too. I think that's it. Welcome to worship this morning. It is great to have you here. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we begin worship today, um, I invite you to center yourselves. Good morning. My name is Paul Betcher, and it is a joy to worship with you all. Would you please stand in body or spirit for our call to worship? (coughs) Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet God provides for the basic sustenance of life. Look at the birds of the air. They neither study, nor plan, nor plot their course, and yet God writes the instinct for migration in their hearts. May our eyes be open to see you. Look at the birds of the air. They neither talk, nor vote, nor debate their responsibilities, yet God weaves them into communities 
which nature and defend. Let us pray. O oh God, you delight not in prompt and show, but in a humble and contrite heart. Overturn our love of worldly possessions and fix our heart more firmly in you, that having nothing, we may yet possess everything, a treasure stored up for us in heaven. Amen. Let us sing our opening song, Living for Jesus. It is found as uh, in our faith, we sing number 241419, and the words are on the screen.
many of you know that song? I've never heard it before. It's beautiful. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I invite our children to come forward for a children's message. How is everybody today? Good. Good. Today is, we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. And so we've got stickers for you. You can all have a sticker. Um, and we've got these flowers. Have you ever seen these paper flowers before? No, you've never seen paper flowers before? I, um, I've seen paper flowers before. I think of them as Mexican flowers. Um, they're made out of, out of paper. Did you know um, that they started making paper flowers? Um, I, I read this. Paper crafting was one of the imports from the Spanish ships when they arrived in Mexico. And so they've been making paper flowers in Mexico for a long, long, long time. After the Spanish conquest, uh, they began using tissue paper for it. Yes, very true, very true. Pirates are on ships. Um, They started making paper flowers, the legend says, because uh, to use in churches during the winter when there were no real flowers to make, to to put up. So we've got beautiful real flowers, um, but what happens? Yes, you can get flowers in the stores now. That's very true. But what happens if this, if you didn't have a store to go to? Um, the Mexican people would start me, started making flowers. And so you can see actually lots of paper crafts um, all over Mexico and that, are, that have its traditions in um, years and years and years and years and years ago. Well, I have something else. I, I love learning about different cultures. This is another um, thing from a different culture. This is a bag, and inside my bag are, has anybody ever seen something like this? No, you've seen them? Inside of this bag are little dolls. Can you see them, my little doll? Let's see. (laughs) There you go. Look at that, that's a tiny little doll. That's a tiny little doll. There are. My bag is full of these tiny little dolls. Do you know what they are? They are not prayer dolls. They are called, um, they're Guatemalan worry dolls. Guatemalan children are taught to tell their worries to the worry doll and then place the doll under their pillow when they go to bed at night. By morning, the dolls have gifted them with the wisdom and the knowledge to eliminate their worries. Have you ever used a worry doll before? I haven't either. I have to say, I've had these worry dolls for a very long time and have never used them. Maybe I should. Are you a worrier? Do you worry about things? No, you got nothing to worry about. How about you? Do you worry about things? No, you do. I know Kate does, Nora. Do you, what, so what are some things that you might worry about if you, might, if you were going to worry? I'm not, I don't need you to do full confession if you don't want to, but what, what might you worry about? You have a concert for school, and so you're worrying about whether you do have one or whether you're going to learn your music and do well in the concert. All of it. Yeah. What else? What, do you, what would you worry about? What? Ah, uh, you're in drama this year, and so you are gonna, you're worrying about whether or not you'll learn your lines, and um, will you freeze when you get up on stage and forget all of your lines with the lights and the people there? Yeah, that's a big worry. How about you? What what do you worry about? Snakes. Snakes. <laughs> yes, we've started uh, walking sometimes at night, and we saw a rattlesnake the other night. It was a baby. It was only that big, but yes, snakes. What would you worry about if you're going to worry? Maybe getting my projects done for school. Getting projects done for school. Getting a good grade in school. Have uh, I imagined that my children were going to worry about making friends when we moved from one school to the other? Um, anything else you think you worry about? So, Guatemalan children, according to legend, were, would tell their, wor- their worries to their dolls and put them under their bed and God would give them the, um, the wisdom and knowledge to eliminate their worries. 
So I don't need a, I don't need a Guatemalan worry doll. It would be fine if I wanted to use it, but I, we go back to what Kate said. Um, we can use prayer to help us with our worry. Um, and then in my sermon, we'll talk about some other things. But sometimes um, we just need to pray about it and say, God, I need to tell you about this. That's all that's happening with this worry doll, too. You can say, Mom or Dad, I, I'm worrying about this. Can you help me with this? And so there's lots of ways that we can deal with worry. But you know what doesn't help? Keeping it all to yourself. And so I encourage you, if you're worried about something, then to maybe think about a Guatemalan worry doll and, and tell your worries and stick it under your pillow. Or pray and ask God to help you or talk to your family. All right, let's have a prayer. If you repeat after me, dear God, we thank you for the cultures of the world that we can learn from. Help us remember that we can call on you when we are worried about something. Amen. All right, I have a sticker. If you'd like to take a sticker, or two or three. Our Old Testament lesson today comes from the book of Joshua. Joshua is speaking to the people before they go into the promised land. Now fear the Lord, fear Yahweh, and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in, and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord." Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We, too, will serve the Lord, because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not provide, forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, No! We will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, You are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, they replied, we are witnesses. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. <coughs> we are still reading through the Sermon on the Mount in the book of Matthew. Jesus continues to share his vision for how his disciples will live in our world. Hear these words from Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 through 34. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what will you wear. If not light, is life not more than food and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They, are, <clears throat> they neither sow, sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying at a single hour <coughs> to your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, 
Even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first to serve the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today, trouble is enough for today. This is the word of God for the people of God. There are so many things in that passage that we could talk about. So many things. We're trekking our way through the Sermon on the Mount, that teaching of Jesus that helped to set the tone for his ministry as he told the crowds and the disciples what he expects out of those who follow him. Jesus was teaching his disciples what it meant to be. Be a people who are blessed by God. Be a people who bless others. Be a people who follow Jesus more fully. We've talked about how we can be yourself as you pray and as you live, not pretending to be someone you're not, but coming with all of your strengths and weaknesses. We've talked about how we are to be loving, not limiting who we are compassionate to. We talked about how to be self-aware as we search those parts of our hearts that need to be transformed by God's love. We talked about how we are to be the salt and the light in the world, blessing others because we are blessed. And today we encounter the teachings of Jesus as he talks about treasures and worry, and most importantly, about how we belong to God. Let us pray. God, we seek to choose you. We seek to follow you. We seek to know you even more. Speak to each of us and speak through me that my words might be yours. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Are you a worrier? I was, nah, I was telling Pastor Kevin this week that I can remember a parent-teacher conference when I was in second grade about my frequent stomach aches. They determined that my worry was fueling stomach aches. And let me tell you, I'm not sure that it's gotten a whole lot better over the years. I am still prone to worry. And no wonder, have you noticed what we have to worry about? Worry has no boundaries. What should I plan for dinner? What should I buy at the grocery store? Where should my kid go to school? Will there be a cure? Worry is part of the lives of the rich and the poor. Every race worries. Every religion worries. Men and women, young and old, married people and single people. Worry encompasses the past and the future. If your stomach ties itself up in knots, if you lose sleep at night because of worry, if you're distracted during the day because of worry, you are not alone. Jesus talks about worry in his Sermon on the Mount and the teaching that is meant to offer freedom and release, and we get to choose if we read it with criticism or with invitation. This teaching today was not done in a vacuum. Jesus has been talking to the crowds about who God is. He's perhaps getting a little bit of excited. People are listening. Let me tell you about my father, Jesus is saying. Now, I know there's baggage in calling God Father, but it's hard to capture what Jesus is saying in the limitations of our language and the ways that we've kind of messed up God's nature and perfection with this title Jesus is making the case in this entire passage that God is not some being way out there, the cosmic artist who sculpted the earth into existence and then spun us on our axis and left us alone. 
Jesus is making the case that God is not a vengeful God, a God of anger that we have to appease. Jesus is making the case that God isn't some God who needs us to do a certain thing or say a certain words or behave exactly right in order for him to pay attention to us. No, Jesus tells us that God is a God who loves, who cares, who provides. The second person of the Trinity is telling us who the first person of the Trinity is. Jesus tells us that God feeds the little birds. God loves the lilies, dresses them, and cares for them. Jesus says, you do not have to worry because God loves you even more. Yes, even you of little faith. Yes, you who have a checkered past. Yes, you who have doubts. Yes, even you who aren't so sure about this God thing. You of little faith. God loves you more than birds and flowers. And God loves those quite a bit. So don't worry. End of sermon. Let's go home. <laughs> right? Well, not quite, (laughs) said the preacher on that side. Not quite. I mean, how many times did your spouse or your kids or your friends tell you to stop worrying about something? Did it work? Of course not. It's all fine and dandy to tell you Jesus says don't worry, so go on home. But what does that really mean? What does it really mean that Jesus tells us not to worry? How can we do that? Scripture absolutely has something to say about that, but we're going to start with my house. (laughs) Yep, you're groaning. I haven't whined about my house in just a little while. Any of you who've been around for the last two years knows that our house is a challenge. (laughs) I walked into my kitchen a few weeks ago, and I looked up. Now, I have to admit, I do that often. It rained, gotta look up. I have to look to see where the roof's leaking this time. On this day, there was a bubble. Yep, you got it. You know that bubble of paint that tells you there's water between the paint and the drywall? There was one of those in the kitchen. There was a leak between my bathroom sink and the kitchen. There was a leak beside the roof where we got a new air conditioner this summer because everybody wants to buy a new air conditioner while they're in Paris. (laughs) There was a leak right there where we had heard the rats scurrying and scratching in our ceiling just a few months ago. Of course there was a leak. The rats and the new air conditioner weren't enough for this summer. Bring on a leak. And do you know what I did about it? Nothing. That's right. Every morning I looked up in my kitchen at that paint bubble to see if it was getting bigger. Every night I looked at that paint bubble to see if it went away. Every day I thought about that paint bubble and the repairs that it represented. That paint bubble did not go away. That paint bubble mocked me. That paint bubble worried me. Jesus says, do not worry about tomorrow because today has enough worries of its own. But man, did I worry. I absolutely worried about tomorrow. What if we have to rip up my new bathroom upstairs and do another bathroom remodel? What if the leak has been so slow and ongoing that it's actually rotten the floor underneath the bathroom sink, and then we have to do another bathroom remodel because in all honesty, we only only remodeled half the bathroom last time. What if of that bathroom, the other one got a remodel? What if it's another roof leak and we have to get a new roof even though, yes, I know, they looked at it last fall and it was fine. My husband says the bubble's been there for weeks. (laughs) I actually think It was August 1st when I found that leak because it was August 1st last year when we had a huge storm and we had rain in our office and in our living room and in our bedroom. And I vaguely remember thinking, yep, August 1st, time for something new. (laughs) 
for weeks, months, I've worried over this thing. Jesus says, do not worry. Irma Bombeck said, worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do but never gets you anywhere. <laughs> My worry over this paint bubble was like a rocking chair. I just sat and rocked and rocked, never going anywhere, doing anything. I just watched that paint bubble get bigger and worried over what the plumbing and the remodeling bill was going to look like. Worry can immobilize us from action. We sit in our rocking chair and we worry. We borrow worry from tomorrow and we don't do. When we get immobilized from our worry, Jesus has some words for us. We can lose touch with reality with our worry. We can get in our heads and not really see what's going around us. And so Jesus gives us a tool. Are you worried? Look around you. Look up. See the birds? They're cared for. Look down. See the flowers? They're cared for. Look in the mirror. He didn't really say that, but he could have. <laughs> Look in the mirror. God will care for you as well. Worry can immobilize us from action. Once we're grounded, Joshua tells us we need to choose. The Israelites were getting ready to go into Canaan, the land they knew was promised to them. In this in-between place with the promised land before them and the wilderness behind them, Joshua stopped them. He grounded them in their past. He reminded them of their father, Abraham's God and the gods they were forced to serve in Egypt. And then he challenged them for the future. He reminded them that they were going to a place where they would be tempted by the idolatry of the land they were entering, and they had a choice to make. Choose, he said, if you're going to fix your eyes on God or if you're going to let the worries and distractions and the troubles that you face distract you. Choose if you're going to fix your eyes on God or if you're going to worship the gods of money or wealth or whatever you're chasing. Joshua says, choose. Joshua told the people that they had a choice to make. Jesus tells the people that they have a choice to make. The Spirit tells us we have a choice to make. Where will you put your focus? On the things of this world? that are here today and gone tomorrow? Or on God, who is the kind of God who feeds the birds and clothes the grass? You are more than they are. So first, choose to act. Do something. Don't stay in your worry. That could mean giving your worry one hour every week to address it and then make a plan. That could mean talking to your worry, telling it you are choosing God. It could mean just calling the plumber. I called Wednesday, he came on Friday, he fixed the problem in less than 30 minutes. I now have a gaping hole in my kitchen that's covered in plastic, but the leak was simple. It was nothing. My worry was like my grandma's rocking chair, making a lot of noise while moving nowhere. God says, ground yourself. Ground yourself with where you see God around you. Ground yourself in your past where God has been visible and then choose to act. Divert your mental attention, your mental energy into something fruitful like calling the plumber, calling the doctor, talking with the counselor. Divert your mental energy into preparing for that thing you're worried about. Get a fire extinguisher, call a lawyer, Divert your mental energy to something else, like fruitful prayer. Our worry is trying to protect us at the basic level, but our worry is not going to be what brings us peace. Only God can do that. And so choose to rest in what we know of God. Stephen Hawking once said, I believe everyone should have a broad picture of how the universe operates and our place in it. It is a basic human desire, and it also puts our worries into perspective. Our worries are put into perspective when we keep a broad picture of how God works in the universe and with us. 
Jesus has given us a picture of God, of who God is. The very nature of God is good, loving, great God who cares for us. You see, our concerns and our basic needs are not unimportant. In fact, they're quite important to our lives, but we shine when we shine the light of the hope of God's reign on our concerns, they're somewhat diminished. When we allow the light of the hope of God's reign to shine on our worries, they are put in their rightful place. Friends, we serve a God who invites us to be. God is attentive and listening. God knows what we need. God is generous and good to the righteous and to those of us who miss the mark. God is a kind of God who feeds the birds and clothes the grass, and God will do that for us. You do not have to worry because God will work all things good in this world. You do not have to worry because God's reign is now and will continue to the end of time. You do not have to worry. May you find this week, may you find in your worries, rest in the assurances of God who invites you out of that rocking chair of worry and into a life lived choosing to ground yourself in what you know of God's peace and love for you in the past, in the present, and in the future. Let us pray. God, we are grateful that you care for us, you love us, you call us to fix our eyes on you. Help us not to worry, but to draw strength from knowing that you who cares for the birds and the flowers cares for us even more. Help us focus our eyes on you, our loving God, our Father, our Savior, our Sustainer. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. As we prepare for our time of of prayer, I remind you again of the green prayer sheets on the seat back in front of you. You can write your prayer requests. We are able to pray better if if you write legibly. Um, But we'll pray for whoever we think you've written down. Um, I remind you too, this is um, our celebration of Latin Hispanic Heritage Month. And so our flowers here, um, you saw stickers and uh, bookmarks and other things on your way back out. Our chancel choir next week will sing for us um, some, uh, some songs um, in Spanish. Um, I remind you, this week we have um, Mark Wagner's memorial service on Friday here in this space. And on Saturday, uh, Barbara Freidenberg's um, internment will happen. So if you'd like to n- know the details about that, talk with Joan or myself. And there are others in our, in our midst who have, are recovering from surgeries and re- preparing for surgeries and just need extra prayers. I invite you now to pray with me as we go to God in prayer. God, you are a loving God who sees all, and yet we worry. Forgive us those times that we have been so stuck in our worry that we have lost sight of you and lost sight of the realities of the world around us. We are grateful that we live in a good world, in a good place, with good people surrounding us. Forgive us when we've been so worried about our neighbors that we've not reached out to offer relationship to them. Forgive us when we've been so worried about the strangers uh, that surround us that we have not reached out and offered love. Forgive us when we have been so worried that all we can see is what we're facing. God, we know that you are with us in all things, and we know that this community, our friends, our church family, surround us as well when we but ask. And so, God, we come today asking your prayers for the Wagner family, for the Freidenberg's family, for all anywhere who mourn this day. We pray to you this day for Ron and for April and for others who've had surgeries and are recovering. We pray for others who are preparing for surgeries this week and in the weeks to come. As the great physician, O God, we pray that you would help the doctors to heal bodies. 
But we also know that you can do amazing things that doctors can't do. And so we pray for healing. God, we lift to you today the plight of those in Central and South America who are seeing um, struggles in their countries for those who are living through wars and famines and unrest, for those who don't know how to live where they are and seek a different place. God, forgive us when we worry about open borders and too many people coming and don't do action to help the, the real people who are here. We pray, O oh God, that you would help us to be people of action, not simply worry. Help us to reach out to our politicians, to those who can enact laws and humane ways of treating those who do come across our borders. We don't always have good answers, God, but help us to um, encourage those who have the power to make decisions to find good answers. God, we pray to you giving thanks for those who have made us who we are, for those who have um, made tacos and burritos and tostones part of our culture, part of what we eat on a weekly basis. We give thanks for those who have uh, brought us their culture that we might understand and love it as well. God, thank you for the ways that we are indeed a melting pot here of German and Canadian and um, Native American cultures, of Eastern European cultures. We give thanks, O oh God, that you are among us as we uh, are a, a melting pot of Asian cultures and Pacific Islanders, of all the places that our ancestors or our families have come from. God, help us in all that we do to not be people of worry, worrying about the people who look differently than we do, but help us to reach out our hands in trust, in love, in welcome, and in curiosity. God, we know that there is much that we have to learn in this life. We know that there is much that we can do to make the world better, but we pray our thanksgiving that our world is good, that we can find good when we look for it. Show us this week the good that is around us. We thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who was so excited about you that he taught us how to live and how to pray. We pray all of this in his name, as he taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning at 11.30, our youth invites you to come and celebrate with them as they tell you thank you. Um, we, we were generous. You as a church were generous to the youth as they planned a lot of stuff this summer. And so if you um, gave them money for their trips this summer, we invite you to come over to the fellowship hall after worship um, as they'll start serving us at 11.30 and say thank you to us. But we know not all of you are coming. So we wanted to share uh, some images from the youth's summer with a thank you.
money is a tricky thing. When we allow it to control us because we are the focus of our lives, whether it's hoarded or scarce, it's a problem. On the other hand, we can't live in today's capitalistic world without it. So what is the solution to this dilemma? Generosity is the solution. When you give, you reflect God's abundant love and caring through your gifts. As followers of Jesus, we are called to use <coughs> our money to help atone and to bring justice and mercy and hope to the world we live in. Our ushers will now come to receive the gifts that you give. Generous God, thank you for this opportunity to give and be generous. We heard your whisper and took to the rooftops. Help us spread the joy of giving and inspire others to do the same. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn, Seek Ye First. It is found on page 405 of the United Methodist Hymnal. The words will be on the screen. And we will sing verses 1 and 2 and then repeat verse 1.
as you go into this week, don't worry. God's got it. Fix your eyes on our God who knows you and loves you more than the birds and the flowers. Go in the name of God who is our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As you leave this place, I remind you, 1130, we're having hot dogs and cookouts stuff, and there's always coffee and cookies. Will you pass the peace of Christ with one another as we sing our shalom? Before you leave, say hi to at least three people that you haven't seen in a while, maybe even one of them here from Chicago. (laughs) 